Hello and welcome into the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. I'm National Recruiting Analyst Cooper Patagna alongside 24-7 Sports Director of Scouting, Andrew Ivins. It is December 20th, National Signing Day. It is our Super Bowl here at 24-7 Sports. In case you've missed it, we've been on a show for the last six and a half hours. Now we're going to do our best to recap it over the next half hour or so, or so, excuse me. Drew, where to start? Let's start with the number one player in the country. Jeremiah Smith, been committed to the Ohio State Buckeyes for a very long time. A lot of suspense. Miami making a late late charge here for Jeremiah Smith. Plays his football at Shamanan Madonna in Florida. Andrew, it is 4.32 Central Time, 5.32 Eastern Time. We still do not have a letter of intent for the number one player in the country for either Ohio State or Miami, even though Jeremiah Smith made his intentions known publicly that he would be taking his talents to Columbus, Ohio. Andrew, your take on this one as Mario Cristobal and Ryan Day battle it out for the best player in the country. Cooper, what did you call Mario Cristobal a few weeks ago? The Grinch, he comes to steal your presence. Isn't that what you said? I just watched The Grinch the other night. Uh, now I have some context. I'd never seen the movie before. I thought Florida State had the best chance of flipping Jeremiah Smith. But uh, Miami, tons of smoke in the hours leading up to his announcement, which we had on, on, on the show, uh, a live stream there. And then, like you said, no letter of intent has been announced by Ohio State. I had someone, you know, this isn't my lane anymore when it comes to the scoop, but I had someone reach out to me and said, hey, this thing's going to get crazy. It's going to be a bit of a roller coaster. I don't know what to make of it. I think Ohio State needs to hold on to them. I know, I think you said on one of your segments, you called them a winner for the day. Uh, it's been a tough sledding for the Buckeyes. They, they, they hold on to Edric Houston. Um, they lose Jeremiah McLennan to... Oregon, it's been an interesting go of things. And, and to me, they got to get Jeremiah Smith. On the flip side, Miami, they haven't signed the number one ranked player from the state of Florida since 2002, Cooper. So uh, a lot at stake here. I, I don't know. I mean, what, what do you what what, do, what is your take on it? I'm not surprised at all. We talked about Miami in, in uh, earlier in the broadcast this morning. You talk about Jeremiah Smith. If you know anything about Mario Cristobal, I happen to work for the man for a couple of years. This is a guy that is not going to let a guy like Jeremiah Smith just go quietly in the middle of the night to go play his football in the state of Ohio. This is a guy that he has had circled for a long time. Over the summer, I sat in Mario Cristobal's office. He turned on a tape of Jeremiah Smith and he said, that's the guy I want. Now, listen, everybody wants that player. That's the number one player in the country. They brought Mario Cristobal to Miami to get players like Jeremiah Smith. You think about Miami, what they're on the heels of right now off the field. This is going to be their first back-to-back -to -back top 10 ranked recruiting class in the 24-7 sports era since 2010. That's what that is. So Miami getting it done on the recruiting trail. Drew, I expect Miami to go so hard on Jeremiah Smith here all the way down the line to make this nearly an impossible situation for him to leave the state of Florida. Obviously, NIL is involved here. You think about that as well. But Drew, I would ask you, who has the advantage right now? If it's a coin flip between Miami and Ohio State, who do you think's the team that you like? You probably gravitate towards Miami because of the relationships that Jeremiah Smith has in the state of Florida, especially with some teammates going to play at Miami as well. Yeah, I, I had someone in South Florida tell me that's connected to the situation that Jeremiah Smith wants to be at Miami. Depending on when you're listening or watching this show, we might know where he's actually headed. Uh, but I think the family was pretty dead set on Ohio State because of Brian Hartline, because of the fact that the Buckeyes churn out NFL wide receivers, eight active wide receivers in the NFL. Um, those guys make plays. I think they fought long term. But as Brandon Marcello outlined on 247sports.com earlier in the week, this is kind of the first of its kind in terms of the recruitment. Long term, short term. You know, Miami hasn't had a first round wide receiver in a while. You got to go back, I think, to 2017. That's the first time uh, a, a guy went that early. But the Hurricanes, even if they don't get Jeremiah Smith, how about that wide receiver hall? Nykar previously committed to Georgia. Chance Robinson, they fend off Ohio State and Ole Miss for. Uh, and then Josiah Trader, who was flirting with Florida and uh, Florida State. So 
it's a big haul for the Hurricanes. Toss Elijah Lofton into the mix, um, and the talent is getting better there. I think the biggest question mark for my for Miami, even if you know, depending on what happens here with uh, Jeremiah Smith, is what's the plan at quarterback? Yeah, I got a, a pretty good feeling uh, that Cam Ward will probably end up being the guy there. Miami, Florida State, both teams certainly involved as Cam Ward uh, kind of winds down to making a decision there. Can you imagine Cam Ward coming over from Washington State? That dynamic of an arm, you got guys like that that you mentioned, Jeremiah Smith, Nye Carr, JoJo Trader. They got some weapons there, Coral Gables, Mario Cristobal going into year three, trying to flip that thing. Outside of that, Drew, we did get a big flip. Five-star, number one safety in the country, number 15 player, K.J. Bolden. We knew this one was going to be wild. 48 hours ago, you probably would have said Auburn, uh, according to director of recruiting Steve Wilfong. You turn the clock, it's Georgia who makes a late push. You talk to some people around the Georgia program. Even as K.J. Bolden has been committed to Florida State, this is one that they were going to white knuckle to the end, and it, it, it didn't seem like one that Kirby Smart was going to let go. End of the day, Kirby Smart, Will Muschamp, Glenn Schumann, the co-DCs there, they get this one done. This is a huge one. You think about Georgia, Drew, I feel like we didn't even talk about Ellis Robinson, the most complete class, top to bottom, love their O-line. Love their defensive line. Love their second level. Love their secondary. They got Puglisi. Now in the absence of Dylan Riola, their running backs are certainly talented as well. This was kind of like the cherry on top. I, I feel like Kirby Smart probably said, listen, boys, uh, this is the one we need. This is the one we're going to get, and we're going out with a bang here. Well, they didn't get Caleb Downs last cycle, right? Now you look at this cycle. They got the number one corner, Ellis Robinson, the number one safety, uh, in K.J. Bolden, who that's a massive loss for Florida State. I mean, a guy that they invested so much time in. Number one linebacker in Justin Williams. You want to talk about the beef up front. We keep discussing that offensive line, the defensive line. Naz Johnson, Joseph Ajanye, um, Nnamdi Okbo. I mean, this unit, we didn't even mention Andre Evans at any point today. Uh, during the seven hours of commercial free coverage. Andre Evans has one of the best blends of speed and size in the entire cycle. He's another cornerback in our top 100. I mean, Georgia is just reloading. Uh, I think the story coming out of today, you know, number one class for them. They locked it up. We awarded it to them. I mean, Alabama can make a late charge here. We'll see. Uh, but they have to hang on to Ryan Williams. That recruitment's going to stretch into February. First number one ranked class for Kirby Smart since 2020. And think about it. That's the group that fueled, you know, the back-to-back -back national titles. That group included Jalen Carter, uh, you know, Brock or Carson Beck, uh, a, a ton of different dudes. I mean, Georgia just keeps getting richer, man. I, I think we just get, uh, you know, exhausted talking about it. But, man, this class is going to come in and they're going to push – they're going to push the guys already in Athens uh, to get better. I mean, the best of the best play at Georgia. I think I heard you say that. I absolutely agree. Third number one recruiting class in the last seven years. Uh, the only other team to do that, Alabama in the 24-7 sports uh, recruiting era, excuse me, in 2010. Drew, how about Florida turning the page, staying in the SEC? Florida was a team that we talked about on this show yesterday as we previewed, previewed National Signing Day. We said, hey, it's a critical 24 hours for the Florida Gators and for Billy Napier. I don't like saying that about a coach whose job is to coach, right? And the on-field results speak for themselves. Talent acquisition has really not been the struggle for Billy Napier, but they're bleeding a little bit. You think about these names, five-star Defensive back Xavier Filsome flips to Texas. Amarius Williams flips to Auburn. Guy right there knocking on the door of five-star status. Darius Hayes flips to Miami, top 247 linebacker. Naj Johnson flips to Georgia. Jamate Waller to Auburn. Wardell Mack right uh, to Texas. And Kendall Jackson now at Texas A&M. Andrew, that's a lot of dudes and a lot of talent. A couple weeks ago, this team was ranked the highest out of the three teams in the state of Florida. You fast forward to today, this team's at number 16. This seemed like the linchpin class. Now, here's the good part if you're Florida. DJ Lagway, who we love, the number four player in the country, number two arm, and a guy that has a chance to be the number one player in the country, he's sticking. He's staying home. So he's still there riding with Billy Napier. It looks, as of right now, that five-star LJ McCray, defensive lineman, top 10 player in the country from the state of Florida as well. He looks like he's sticking with the Florida Gators as well. Like I said, 5.41 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.41 Central. We are telling you this as things happen. Signing day, of course, 
very fluid. Drew, here's the thing. Uh, Florida lost a lot, but if there were two guys that you absolutely had to have and had to hang on, it was DJ Lagway and LJ McCray. I'm not saying they came out of here unscathed, but the two dudes that you had to go forward with were those two guys. Outside of that, dude, it's like if I'm a Florida fan, I'm like scratching my head being like, what is happening right now? And what, what the heck happened in the last two weeks? So wait, you're a Florida fan scratching your head, but don't you think that Florida fan is kind of the product of what's going on right now? You think about all the noise around Billy Napier. He has made it so clear. He wants to build through the high school ranks, right? We saw how many true freshmen play for Florida in 2023. Yes, they missed out on a bowl game, but how much of that core nucleus got key playing time, key snaps? Well, I'll tell you something. All those names you rattled off were guys that could have contributed in 2024 for the Gators. Now Florida has to hit reset. I like the two additions they had on signing day. Jaden Ball, the running back out of Georgia. Uh, Greg Smith, a safety out of Florida. Those guys are fine playing B takes for me. I think they can play in the SEC. But man, this recruiting class just got shredded to pieces, Cooper. Uh, DJ Lagway, vital. We've been saying that all along. Billy Napier needs to get him across the finish line. They get it done. USC was calling late. Um, you had Clemson involved, Texas A&M, Houston, a, a wide variety of schools. So that's the good. But the bad thing is now Florida's in a situation where they're going to have to go in the transfer portal. And, yes, Billy Napier has dipped his toe in there, but he hasn't embraced it maybe like some of these other programs. I mean, they haven't been linked to the high-profile transfers. They haven't been linked to the LT Overtons, the Walter Nolans of the world, the Evan Stewarts. They're not just in that market. They got a Graham Mertz. Uh, they'll take some guys here, an Ivy League player and something like that. What is Florida going to do to get geared up for 2024? That's the big storyline for me. I think Lagway is, is is vital. We keep saying that. They had to keep him. We'll see what happens with LJ McCray. Uh, but, man, Florida, you know, trending down just in terms of the outlook on that roster. I don't know how they, they fix it right away because I, I think that group they had committed, you know, the third week of October before the losing streak, I mean, man, number three, that would have been a top five class. Yeah, the, these aren't just names, dude. Like, the, these are guys. Amarius Williams is a dude. Amarius Williams is a guy we think could be a five-star. Nas Johnson is a guy charging up our board very late. These are really, really good players. And you give credit to Billy Napier and the job that his staff do, has done. And then it's all about execution at the end. If you don't get their signature, it doesn't matter. So that's where Florida is right now. It's not so much about, you know, like uh, uh, I think three or four weeks ago, I came on the show. I was like, hey, trust the process. Trust the process. Well, you can only trust the process so much of the hypothetical that you're going to get the signatures. That doesn't happen, right? So a big year three for Billy Napier. And I think the other thing, Drew, is, is like the recruiting is the best thing that Billy Napier had going for him. Now you lose these guys, their perception once again going into the offseason. Is he the right guy? You're 11 and 14, you're 5 and 7, you don't make a postseason game. I don't know, man. The 2024 schedule is going to be tough. So Florida certainly looks like a team who came out on the wrong side of this as well. George, uh, excuse me, Drew, the top five teams in the country, we've touched on two of them. Georgia at the top, like I said, third time, seven years. Alabama, number two. We'll come back to them in a second. Ohio State, we talked about them. Oregon at number four. Texas at number five. That's what it looks like right now. Let's start with Alabama, Drew. We talked about them a little bit. Ryan Williams, he will sign in February. Auburn, LSU, a handful of other teams still charging their receiver reclass from 25 to 24. Dynamic playmaker, but it looks right now that Alabama is in a really good position to hang on to him. Julian Sane, we talked about. Jalen Mbakwe, right? We've talked about him, top 247 corner and five star. How about Kevin Riley, man, flipping him from the U? That kind of went under the radar a little bit. But Alabama, Drew, it's like all of a sudden you look up and I'm like, I, I told Josh Pate, I'm like, this is like the quietest number two class I think I can remember. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, it was sitting in the top ten for a long time. Ryan Williams certainly reclassifying jacked him up in the rankings. But I thought it kind of like lacked the star power uh, compared to maybe some previous Alabama classes. Now you look at it, they also got Arian Hampton, who they flipped from Texas, kind of a gadget utility player. I don't know really where you, you, you line him up. I think maybe as a slot receiver could also deploy him as a running back. I think Jay Sean Ross, who they got out of Missouri, I don't know if that was on Monday or Tuesday night. I mean, elite, elite testing profile, really the edge rusher for them. And then Kevin Riley was big. I mean, this Alabama class, uh, it, it's got it's got a chance to be to be really good. And I think Julian saying 
when I look at what Alabama has taken at the quarterback position in, in recent years, he's my favorite of the crop. Jalen Mbakwe, getting him signed. I mean, Auburn to me was a school that, you know, I thought should have made a, a, a more of a push for Mbakwe. He's played quarterback. He's going to be a corner for them. Uh, you get Zabian Brown out of California, one of the most technically buttoned up guys. I mean, this is a good group. And Cooper, I think they're going to be even more active in the transfer portal. Got LT Overton on Tuesday, former five-star recruit out of Texas A&M. I mean, this is – this is, you're right. It was kind of like the silent assassin Alabama here down the stretch. But is it surprising? I mean, this is what Nick Saban does. Yeah, 11 players from the state of Alabama as well. A lot of guys that I'm familiar with. Kevin Riley, I said the comp for me was Brian Robinson, right? Another guy out of Tuscaloosa right there in their backyard now in the NFL with the commanders by way of Alabama. How about Rydarius Morgan, another guy, Central Phoenix City, uh, a really good active safety, especially in run support. I think he can play that star position for them. You go down the list, guys like Jeremiah Beeman. So they have done a phenomenal job in the state of Alabama along with Auburn. We'll talk about them a little bit later, but if you're an Alabama fan, a little bit more of the same, right? This is kind of where you expect Nick Saban to kind of fall every single year. The good thing for them, quarterback positions kind of giving them some fits outside of even Jalen Milrow emerging this year. Guys like Ty Simpson haven't panned out to be what a lot of people thought they would. Julian saying uh, a lot of confidence there and what he can be coming over from California. All right, Drew, moving on. We talked about Ohio State a little bit. Let's talk about Oregon at number four. Dan Lanning came on the show, and he just looked like a guy that's been, uh, you know, enjoying the grind throughout the day. Uh, you know, lights, I, I told Josh, like, lights are on, nobody's home. This guy is just set on recruiting, kind of a maniacal approach. And guess what? They had a pretty good day. They flipped top 247 receiver Jeremiah McClellan from St. Louis, committed to Ohio State. To Oregon Junior Adams, receiver coach over there. Big win for him. They also get Ryan Pelham, uh, like another one with Oregon that just kind of came out of nowhere. They flip him from USC. Seems like Dan Lanning, his staff, you got to keep an eye out on them. And then the defensive line hall, Drew, we've been talking about it uh, in terms of how they're building on the West Coast. Aiden Breeland, Elijah Rushing, Jericho Johnson expected uh, to join the fold as well. Oregon is one of those teams, Drew. I, I, I talk about a lot. I think we've liked the direction of this program. They seem to be taking, taking it to a whole nother level, and this is just what they've done on the high school side, not to mention they went out, got Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore as well. Hey, you didn't even mention Jaquan McCroy sticking with Oregon. Did you see that video clip where he takes the Colorado not. hat? Remember, he went he went out to uh, Boulder on an official visit, just tossed it across the gym. That's a big deal. I. I think when we look big picture coming out of signing day, right? The conferences are changing. Oregon, all these schools are moving into the Big Ten. You got Texas, Oklahoma headed to the SEC. I think out of that bunch uh, of the of the new look Big Ten, Oregon is the most ready to go. They got the quarterback position figured out. They're dialed in in, in the trenches. And Dan Lanning is making a name for himself this time of the year. Uh, last signing day, they were a winner. He had that video of him puffing the cigar in his office. I think he's probably got another cigar he's going to bust out tonight from uh, a humidifier somewhere tucked in one of those corners of, of the fortress they got there in, uh, in Eugene. No, nice day for Oregon. I mean, those two receivers, that, that felt like it came out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. He needs a, a stogie, man. That guy's been working hard. The Danimal is what we call him here, the Oyster Boys. All right, how about Texas, man? Ryan Wingo, we knew it was going to be a fight. Even when he committed to Texas the first time, Missouri hanging around, Eli Drinkwitz, he makes another run. But Ryan Wingo, the five-star receiver, ends up sticking with the Longhorns out of the St. Louis area. Outside of that, Colin Simmons, five-star edge. Brandon Baker, five-star tackle. Xavier Filsame, five-star safety Texas getting it done. You think about what they've already done in the portal as well. Andrew McCuba coming over from Clemson. Matthew Golden coming over from Houston. Drew, I said it on the show. It seems to be a team that uh, readily understands that the SEC is closely approaching, but they also understand, like, hey, we got some legitimate guys here in Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning over the next three years if we are lucky that we really need to take advantage of. Their recruiting classes – make me think this is a program kind of pushing all their chips to the middle of the table and say, let's go win a national championship. Yeah, that's their window, right, with those two quarterbacks. I like Trey Owens, who they signed today as well. I mean, a guy that's outside the top 247 for us. We're going to see him at the All-American Bowl. Excellent senior season at Cy Fair High School there in Texas. Completed over 70% of his passes. Six foot five, prototypical frame. 
Uh, Trey Scott, the editor for 24-7 Sports, he kind of brought this up when I sat down for the production meeting early in the morning hours. Texas signed a top five class a year after when I I think they, I don't want to say they like outkicked their coverage, but they definitely got a bump from the Arch Manning madness in, in the 2023 cycle. And you kind of just look up and it's like, whoa, Texas is right here. And they're recruiting all over. Back in Florida again, I think they signed four kids out of there. Jarrett Gibson, the running back, after taking Cedric Baxter the year before. I mean, Steve Sarkeesian doesn't probably get enough credit as a recruiter, but he's building out that roster. I also love what they're doing in the trenches. Kyle Flood there. I mean, they're going to be ready to go in the SEC uh, just with how physical they are. So taking advantage not only of that quarterback window, recruits realizing they got those guys there, but the fact that they're in the college football playoff. I mean, this is a solid class. Kobe Black is committed as a safety as well. Think about the future of that secondary, Cooper. Malik Muhammad from the 2023 cycle, PFF, true freshman, All-American. Now you're tossing Colin Simmons on, and on the defense, Kobe Black, Xavier Philsam. They got a uh, they got a they got a churn in right now. Texas rolling. You look past five, number six, Florida State, number seven, Miami. How about Auburn, man? Charging up the board. Number eight right now with the help of Amaris Williams flipping from Florida. Oklahoma number nine. Notre Dame number ten. Drew, I want to start with Auburn. We'll we'll talk about a couple other teams that caught our eye and then we'll get out of here. It's been a long day for the both of us and the rest of the team here at 24-7 Sports. <laughs> but Auburn, man, I kind of talked about them all day. You can talk about that receiver room. I think we've done that justice, right? Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, Malcolm Simmons, Bryce Kane. You think about those guys. The complexion of that room has completely changed. And I, and I want to go on record. I've said it multiple times throughout the day. People need to look at that receiver room at Auburn and then say, hey, where did things change for Hugh Freeze? That room right there, This you're watching it, watching it right now. It's happening. That room is going to change the perception of that offense, that program under Hugh Freeze. They absolutely nailed that. Then you think about what they did defensively. Demarcus Riddick, Joseph Phillips, Amaris Williams. I mean, Drew, huge fan of what Auburn uh, has done today. And, you know, quite honestly, I said it, it's my favorite class in the entire cycle. Uh, We signaled, I think, a month ago to watch out for Auburn down the stretch. And that's before we even knew Amaris Williams was an option. We'll still see with LJ McCray. 5.54 Eastern time. He has not signed yet. Uh, They're chipping away there. And last cycle it was Kedrick Falk, uh, the uh, defensive lineman who played a bunch for them. No, I, they are a trend-up team for me. And, and imagine if they had got K.J. Bolden in the boat as well. Cooper, I think defensively, the yeah, front seven, it's going to look completely different. I mean, they are going to have guys that can get after the quarterback. We didn't even get to talk about Walker White at any point during the seven hours of commercial free coverage, a member of the freaks list for me. You compare him to Will Levis. I mean, he's a big, muscular guy. Um, type of quarterback you really just don't want to play because he can beat you with his arm, he can beat you with his legs, he can throw the football to all those receivers that you're in love with. Excited to see what Auburn's going to have there in the future on the Plains. All right, a lot of SEC, a lot of Sunshine State recruiting. Those guys have kind of dominated the headlines. Another team, Drew, in the six and a half hours that we didn't really get to spend a lot of time on. I think you and I are kind of locked in on these dudes. You look back a couple years ago, Who was the team that was third behind only Alabama and LSU and NFL draft picks with nine? Cincinnati under Luke Fickle. How about this? Wisconsin right now at number 22. Sneaky Wisconsin. Luke Fickle, you're not getting past us. Drew, you mentioned it. Said we got to talk about Wisconsin. What would you like about what they did today? Got Ernest Weiler, right, committed. Top 247 defensive lineman out of the DMV. I just think this class, you look at it, and, okay, I can see some future NFL dudes. Uh, held on to Xavier Lucas, a, a cornerback out of American Heritage. Anyone that knows me says you want to take DBs out of AMH. Pat Sertain, the second. You got Tyson Campbell, uh, a bunch of other guys making plays in college. Like that's where you go for your defensive backs. Miami brought Xavier Lucas in for an official visit. Wisconsin holds on to him. Uh, we love Dylan Johnson, the running or Dylan Jones, the running back. We love Dylan Johnson, the interior defensive lineman. It's this only the second top 25 class for Wisconsin in the 24-7 sports recruiting era. And I just think Luke Fickle, program builder, these are developmental guys. They all have traits. Uh, Dylan Johnson and Dylan Jones, both elite wrestlers. Luke Fickle, three-time state champ when he was in high school. It's easy to see what they want to do 
Um, and hey, look, man, they're, they're active in the transfer portal as well. Tyler Van Dyke comes in from Miami. He's looking for a fresh start there. Don't think anyone is talking about Wisconsin. I'm buying some stock in the Badgers. I'm going to jump around in the third quarter. Yeah, Luke Fickle, my man, dude. Love that guy. Love the way he goes about his approach. They know who they are, what they're about. He's got some dogs over there getting it done on the recruiting trail. Love that from Wisconsin. Only going to continue to build there in Madison. Two other teams, SEC, Drew. I got to give some love to, man. How about Missouri? Is this the best number 24 ranked class we have ever seen. I mean, think about this. Williams Winery, five-star. Courtney Crutchfield, another guy we got in the top 60. We love Jalen Brown. We just shot up to, you know, from, from Alabama. Cam Keys, you love. Jaron Sensiball. I saw that one this morning. I'm like, where did that come from? Where is this dude, man? Andrew, you combine that with Caden Green, Toriano Pride, a uh, handful of other guys I'm probably missing as well. Eli Trinkowitz, man. The nerd is what they call him. I was talking to Carl Reed. Carl Reed said that guy walked into his office and said, hey, I might look like a nerdy coach. I'm a dog, though. I'm a dog. Guess what? Dude, <laughs> sign me up for this class. I love it from drink. Yeah, you don't even mention James Madison. Um uh, dude, up and down the board. <laughs> I, I love everything about this. Re- I don't know how it's ranked 24th. And it, we can talk about LSU as well. Where is LSU sitting in the rankings? I don't know how they are ranked where they are. No, Missouri is going to be an issue for these teams in the SEC. We've seen them kind of sneak up on some people, win some games. They've almost got Georgia a few different times. I mean, like over the next two, three, four years, assuming Missouri can keep this up, they are going to be a thorn in everyone's side. You're not going to want to play them. Blake Baker, they locked him into a contract extension. They lock the nerd into a contract extension. I want some Missouri gear. I want a Missouri mini helmet for my backdrop. I told Blake Baker that, friend of the pod, I'm like, we're going to show Missouri some love. Like, give me give me some stuff to represent the show, the show me state. Revenge of the nerd, dude. He's out here balling. Absolutely. <laughs> Eli Drinkwitz. Ole Miss drew the other team. I love what they did in the state of Mississippi. You think about Camarion Franklin, Will Eccles at the top of the board. We talked about him. O-line, D-line, whatever. Doesn't matter. Guy's a great player. He's going to do great things in Oxford. You go down the list. Cameron Beavers, Norrell White, Jeffrey Rush. They're getting it done through the high school. That should be very scary for anybody else in the SEC, considering what they've done via the transfer portal. Still out there, Walter Nolan, a guy that they could get their hands on. About Princely, uh, Yuman Mielin, right? Juice Wells coming over from South Carolina. Jackson Dart coming back for another year. All of a sudden, Ole Miss, I'm like, how do you build a championship roster in Oxford? If these dudes get into a 12-team playoff, Absolutely. One of the last teams that I would want to see, right, with the offensive firepower that they have and then building their line of scrimmage through high school ranks. I mean, Ole Miss, Drew, to me, you look at Missouri, you look at Ole Miss, you're like, all right, how is one of these teams going to break through? I think these guys are onto something. I think they got the recipe here. Yeah, three of the top five recruits in the state of Mississippi signing with the Rebels, obviously taking advantage of what has gone on there in Starkville, but Lane Kiffin, He's one of the kings of the transfer portal. This is the first year I felt like they really dialed in on the high school recruiting. And it used to be kind of flip miss. Lane would get involved there. They did it early. I mean, they, they did most of their work early on in the cycle. You're, you're spot on here, Cooper. I'm excited about Ole Miss football and what they got going in terms of the roster. Also hit the junior college ranks. I, I think for Ole Miss, it's it's three different avenues to build out that roster. It's the JUCO ecosystem, which you need to do when you're in the state of Mississippi. Uh, the transfer portal where they continue to crush. And then here on the defensive side of the ball, you didn't even mention Cam Beavers, uh, Cam Franklin, and then your guy, Will Eccles, man. Two-way lineman. Uh, apparently some people have thought he's a you know top 247 guy all along. Hey, we're buying stock now. We're going to see him at the San, in San Antonio at the All-American Bowl. This is a kid that's going to play defense in Oxford. I said, hey, do you want to play some – will you play some offense for us? And he's like, absolutely. Love that. Love to hear that from Will Eccles. Drew's got some receipts, man. I, I enjoyed that on the show. Hey, Drew, we talked about the teams we liked. Was there a program or two, not to put you on the spot, and maybe think about it for a little bit while I'll talk about some teams that maybe disappointed me a little bit. We've talked about Florida. Florida's just going through it. Right. I mean, I, I, I don't really even need to elaborate more to me, Drew. It was like chum in the water. Right. You got this team that's uh, still trying to figure it out on the field. And you've had the last couple of weeks after the transfer portal. I feel like teams just focused in on Gainesville and said, wait, we got two weeks. Look at Florida's class. 
They're ripe for the picking. That's exactly what happened, right? So it wasn't like, hey, they didn't go out there, identify, evaluate the right guys. They've done that. I said that on uh, uh, Tuesday's show, right? They've done all the right things. It's about them winning football games now. That's why they're in the position that they're in. Credit to Billy Napier for getting DJ Lagway, Elgin McCray in the boat. Drew, the other team, how about USC at 18? They didn't bring you from Oklahoma to finish number 18 at USC when you're going to play in the Big Ten next year. That ain't the way it goes. And then Dan Lanning goes into your backyard and takes Ryan Pelham for you? I mean, what are we doing at the line of scrimmage? What are, what are we doing in, in general? You bring Will Howard over. We all know you can recruit the skill position. What are we doing at the point of attack? We'll see, Drew. I, listen, new defensive coordinator hire. They bring some guys. Doug Belt comes over from Houston. I like it. They have to change things up. And, and this is one of those, though, Drew. I expect USC to be a top six, top seven recruiting program every year. And guess what? You get what you emphasize. The only reason that you were at number 18 is because you didn't emphasize it enough. That is my biggest disappointment. Don't tell me about the transfer portal when you just went 7-5 and five with a Heisman winning trophy quarterback, right? So... I don't know. I expect it more, man. They got to ramp it up for me. I, it, USC is big disappointment for me. I, I think you're spot on. What is this recruiting class without Jason Zamadella, our number one ranked interior offensive lineman? They they got him back in the summer. I mean, you remove him, I think it would drop into the into the twenties. I asked Blair and Hulo, you know, on our set, how is Noah Carter? pass rusher from the state of Arizona going to Washington and Deshaun Warner, a big riser for us going to Kansas. I know Arizona is, I mean, would you, you would probably call it LA's backyard right there, but like those are guys that USC should be locked in on. Am I wrong here, Cooper? I mean, Tracy edge edge rushers, like that is exactly what USC needs. And they weren't even involved in the recruitment. Then you can throw Eliza rushing in there, Aiden Breland, you know, who is in their backyard and, yeah, I think you are right to have some question marks about just what what is the plan in terms of building out that roster because the transfers really didn't didn't give you what you wanted in 2022. Hey, I got another team for you uh, sticking out on the West Coast, Colorado. You know, Jordan Seaton. We still don't know what's going on with him. Uh, Maryland, a few crystal ball picks in. Colorado wasn't able to get Jaquan McCroy. Uh, lost Amatre Bradford to Georgia Tech. I know they have the number one ranked transfer portal class, but you know, for a team that was involved with a variety of different guys, a variety of different high schoolers, Charles Lester, King Joseph Edwards, who ended up at Syracuse, I, I think it's notable that they, uh, they kind of struck out with the high schoolers here on Wednesday. Yeah, they're portal living, and that's okay. Some of the names that came through, Drew, you and I talked about Cordell Russell from TCU, Quincy Wiggins from LSU, Draylon Miller. How about that high school ranks? You think their, their receiving core is going to be absolutely nasty. You think about Travis Hunter, Amarian Miller. I mean, they're going to be a group. If they can improve on the offensive line, that's a big question mark. That receiving core with the uh, addition of Shador Sanders coming back, Colorado going to be dangerous. Drew, let's get you out of here. One final takeaway for the director of scouting at 24-7 Sports that you want to leave the people with. Drew, what's your final thought of the day? (laughs) Oh, man. Like the hay was in the barn, right? You get on set for seven hours of commercial-free signing day coverage, and you're like, yeah, 95% of the top 247 is committed. And I talked to a Big Ten source on Tuesday, and he said, hey, it's going to get crazy. And I'm like, what, how, how can it get crazy? And I think this is the new Norm Cooper, right? When you have these collectives, it's turned into negotiations, and there is no salary cap, right? Nothing is above the table, right? It's all out there that we're talking about, these dollar figures getting thrown around, but you have schools pitting figures against different schools, and you know it's created some drama for Thursday and Friday. There are still guys on the board. Dominique McKinley, we didn't even mention him. He reports out there that he's not going to sign early. I, I came into the day thinking, hey, we're going to have nothing to talk about when we get into February, that traditional signing day, and it seems like, hey, maybe there are some guys that could still be in play. Ryan Williams is obviously going to be one of them, but some guys could hold out, and I think it's a smart move. If you're in the one percent of recruits that can get away with it why not do it andrew ivins we appreciate you we love you big day for the director of scouting and the oyster boys at 24 7 sports hey to all the people you don't see behind the scenes jason dieter sanley our producer they're the best in the business they bring you this content 
all throughout the year, and they're going to do it in the year of 2024. And guess what? The Oyster Boys aren't going anywhere. We're just getting started. We're ready for 2025. I can't wait. Let's go. We got the All American Bowl. We got the uh, what else? We got Under Armour, Poly Bowl, Catch Us in Hawaii. Drew, have a beer tonight. Maybe 12 of them. Be safe. You enjoy it, Drew. Merry Christmas. I will see you after the break. And to all of you out there, Merry Christmas as well. Guys, we appreciate you joining the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. Every Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be here except the 26th and 27th. And then we're back into the new year. Guys, make sure to smash that subscribe button in that like button for the boys. We love you guys. We'll see you in the new year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year from all of us at 24-7 Sports. (laughs) 